Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Another Knitted Thing and today we're going to be looking at the one and only sock and how to knit the toe. This is the first sock that I've knitted and this is the toe shaping that you can see. So this is on either side of the foot so if I open it up that's where either the top or the bottom of your foot will be. Um, at the top it's joined with some Kitchener stitch. I'm not great at that, I need to practice it, but I'm sure you'll be better at it than me. Um, but it's a really nice decrease and it gives a little bit of fully fashion, fashioning detailing to the sock um, and it's nice and easy to do as well. So this is the sock that I'm knitting currently. There's the heel that we've done previously and this is the point where I'm going to start shaping the toe. I've split my stitches directly in half, so I've got half on each needle. Um, I've got some on the front and on the back. And this is where I'm going to be placing some stitch markers. So these are just gonna help me as I knit the toe. And I'm gonna put one directly on the opposite side to where I'm knitting with, because this is going to be split in half exactly. And I've got one placed at the beginning point of each round, essentially. So with the pattern, I'm going to be knitting one and then I am going to be decreasing into the next two stitches and again knitting one and decreasing into the next two stitches. So on either side of the marker there will be a knit stitch and I'll be working with the two stitches before um, or after that stitch from the marker. So a little trick that I do, um, just to kind of make it a bit easier to see for myself where I'm going to be decreasing is I'm going to knit this first stitch, which is the first stitch of the decrease pattern, but move that stitch round so it's on the second half of my needles. And I'm going to move a stitch round from the other side to the front set of needles, essentially, that I'm working with. This, for me, just makes it easier to see where I'm going to be decreasing. I know then that my stitch markers aren't going to fall off my needles because they're trapped in by two stitches. And it also means that once I then move the stitches round and start knitting again, I will automatically start decreasing. So this first de decrease is a slip slip knit. So I'm going to slip two stitches purlwise and then knit them together. As you can see here, and I have decreased by one stitch. And I'm going to knit all the way across the remaining, remaining stitches on that needle until I get to three stitches before the marker. So just knitting across, as usual, until I get to three stitches before the marker, which I have got to here. And then the two stitches, which I'm gonna be decreasing into, I am going to knit those together. So knit two together, and then knit one. I will then slip the marker, oh, put that back on, and knit one. So then when I turn around for, this, for the magic loop with the circular needles and re, readjust my needle, my stitches, I automatically know that the next two stitches will be a decrease. And I also know that these are going to be a slip, slip, knit. So slip, slip, purlwise, and knit. And I have decreased my third stitch. And then again, knit all the way across to the last three stitches before the marker. And then I'll work the two stitches before, which are the two stitches of the decrease, which are knit two together. It's a little bit tight. Knit two together, knit one, slip marker. And then just to finish off this little bit row, I will knit the first stitch of the next row. But that is essentially the first decrease row that I have done. And so now, so I've decreased four stitches in total over that one row. And I'm now then going to just knit this next round. All stitches, no decrease, just knitting, which is why I've sped it up because you don't really want to just sit and watch me knit a whole row of stitches. Um, it's a bit silly. 
But again, this is self-striping yarn that I bought from Sweden before I came back. So you can see it's striped starting onto the orange. Ah, so I've finished that row. I'm now going to slip the marker to start the second row of the decrease, which I start with the knit one. I'll then swing my knitting around with the magic loop. So I automatically know that on this row, the first two stitches on this needle, once I've repositioned them, will be a slip, slip, knit. So slip one, slip two, purlwise. Get that needle in. And knit them. Then knit all the way across to three stitches before the marker. Yeah, three stitches. I will then knit two together for my second decrease. I'm finding that hard. Go on! Yay! And then knit one for the marker, slip one, and then I can begin the next part. Readjust the needles. And then I also automatically know, because I have knitted that first knit one of, of the decrease, I then decrease these first two stitches. So again, slip, slip, knit. Oh, whether it's a camera angle or I'm just really bad at getting those stitches together today. And then knit all the way across again to the last three stitches. So then this is essentially repeating row one of the decrease. Last three stitches, knit two together. Knit one, slip marker, and then I will knit the first stitch of row two, which is an all knit row. And that is it, that is the repeat for the decrease of this sock. So you can see here I've got a left leaning stitch decrease and I've got one in between. And if you want to kind of find out where you are because say you, you can't quite remember if you're on a decrease row or not, you can look into the stitch below like I'm trying to do here. And if there are two loops, so I've got here, I've got one and then the second one on top. And I've only got one loop coming out of that. So if that is the case, then I know that I have just done a decrease round and that my next round is just going to be all knit. So that is one way that if I put my knitting down and then I'm kind of backing around, I come back to it and I can't remember where I got to, I just look at the first stitch on each half of the needles to figure out where I am, whether it was a decrease because I've got one stitch coming out of two loops or whether it was just a normal knit stitch. So then again, turn. And I sometimes get to the point where I feel that I don't even need these stitch markers because of the way that I have positioned the needle, the stitches on the needles. So I always know that once I have gone around one half, I know that the first two stitches, if I am doing a decrease row, will be the decrease. And I'll end on a knit stitch. And then the same again. You just have to have to know when you get to the end of the row uh, which stitches you should be decreasing because you won't have the marker to gauge from the three stitches. But generally speaking, when you get confident enough, you don't tend to need the markers. So just continue those two rows of one row of the four, decreasing of four stitches and one row, and then row two, which is just knitting all stitches as you go around. And this can be for any gauge again, so this can be if you have multiple stitches. I've only got, I think I've got 40 stitches on both needles, but if you have more than that or less, this technique works exactly the same. You just might have to do more decreases, but that's fine. So this is my decrease row. And you just continue that. So I'm now going to skip ahead and show you what to do towards the end. 
So I have got to the end and I have five stitches on both the front and five stitches on the back needles that I'm working with at the moment and this is a good two centimeters which I'm going to leave it as. I have just done a row of decreasing to get to this point and I'm just going to do one last row of knitting all of the stitches. I just find it gives it a bit of a neater finish and you're not suddenly finishing on a decrease. So I'll do just one more row of knitting all of the stitches before I will then do my kitchener stitch to bind it off. Last couple of stitches. For this point, that is the end of that marker. So I'm going to take that marker off and slip that stitch back to the original side where it came from. If we remember at the beginning, I moved a stitch on either side to kind of to make sure that those stitch markers were trapped in place and they're not going to fall off and also gave me a bit more of an idea where I was. So again, I'm going to take off this halfway point stitch marker. And I'm also going to move that stitch back to the original side where it came from. So you can now see that I've got five stitches on both the front and the back needles. It doesn't matter which way you have it. I'm right-handed, so I'll work with the tail coming from the right. So I'll cut the yarn and we can get going with the kitchener stitch. So I'm going to grab a knitting, not a knitting, darning needle or a needle with an appropriate eye for the yarn that you're using. And I'll go through kitchener stitch on this video as well, just as a reminder, but I'm sure probably you will know it. And I'm just going to put all of those stitches back onto the needles, but kind of quite far down so they're accessible with my sewing needle. And I'm going to do a setup for the kitchener stitch. So for that, I'm going to go into the first stitch on the front needle purlwise. So I've got the front and the back. I'm just going to use those two to set up. So I'm going to purlwise into the front stitch and then go knitwise into the back stitch. And that is my setup. And from then, I'm going to knit the front stitch and take it off. We'll go into the front stitch knitwise and take it off. And then into the second stitch purlwise on the front needle. And then move to the back needle, the first stitch purlwise, and take that off. And then go into the second stitch knitwise, but keep that on. Then onto the front, knitwise, and take it off, knit off, purlwise, and leave it on. So knit off, purl on for the front needle, and then purl off knit on for the back needle. And that is just repeated the whole way across the toe of the sock. Knit off, purl on, and then purl off, knit on. Knit on is 19 in Swedish for anyone who wanted to know. I always laugh when I say 19. Nope, knit on. Oh my god, I've got the wrong way around. Anyway, sock knitting. And then with the last few stitches, I do exactly the same, just to catch them. And then I will knit into that last stitch on the front needle. And purl into the back. If I'm doing this kitchener stitch differently to how you normally do kitchener stitch and how you normally finish socks, then by all means you do your way. Um, I'm always happy to learn, so if there is a neater way than I'm doing, then just let me know in the comments. I'm then going to insert that tail end into the sock, and I'm just going to pull the needle out any random place just so I can get that tail end inside so I can then turn my sock inside out. 
you can see that's the kitchen stitch needs a little bit of blocking and sorting out but I can do that afterwards so then I can turn my sock inside out and find that tail that I just poked in gently pulling that tail through the knit re-thread it onto the tapestry needle and sew in those ends so I'm going to catch about six to eight stitches depending on the yarn if it's bulky yarn you don't need to do so many I don't think if it's a fine lace weight yarn then maybe a few more stitches as you can see I'm just go around catching them it doesn't matter doesn't really matter which ones because it's going to be on the inside and I'll do this on a turned cuff as well I only have two ends to sew in because this was a self striping yarn so I didn't have loads of ends thankfully but you can see I'm just following along that turn, the turn over cuff, and sewing them in. Once I've done that, I'm going to grab some scissors. I only have pinking shears because they were easiest, easiest, they were closest. And I'm just going to chop off those two ends, and then you can turn the sock back inside out. Give it a gentle hand wash, a steam, and a block just to even out all those stitches. And we are done. So thank you so much for watching guys. I'm going to say you can like, comment and subscribe for more knitting content. You can also find me on Patreon and Instagram as another knitted thing. Um, also comment down below and I'll get back to you. Happy knitting guys.